Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Animal Legal Defense Fund's Animal Law Academy. My name is Megan, and I'm one of our events associates. Today, we will be discussing effective advocacy, which strategies work better. Before getting started, a few housekeeping notes. We will have a brief Q&A at the end of the presentation. To submit your questions, please use the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen, and we'll try to get through as many as we can. This webinar does offer closed captioning. To turn on, please click the carrot icon next to the CC button at the bottom of your screen and select Show Subtitles. Joining us today are Campaigns Manager Matt Roselle and Campaigner Abby Benish. As Campaigns Manager, Matt inspires and engages our supporters to participate in Animal Legal Defense Fund's work. Abby is responsible for increasing supporter engagement through outreach, relationship development and management, and drafting campaign-related content. Thank you both for sharing your time and wisdom with us today. I'll pass it over to you and we'll see everyone back here for the live Q&A at the end of the presentation. Great. Hi, everyone. And thank you, Megan, for the introductions. Thanks for being here with us today. This webinar is really going to be informative and more of an in-depth discussion of the most important tools you can utilize as an advocate for change. So here's the outline we're going to be following for today's webinar. We're going to open with a quick overview of the most and also the least influential tools that we'll be covering. And then we're going to hop right into our discussions about those tools, what they are, and then how to use them. We're going to start with op-eds and letters to the editor, tracking your legislator's calendar for upcoming events and town halls, testifying, writing and calling your legislator, and then eventually meeting with your legislator. And we will have time at the end for questions if you have any. Okay, so today, Today's discussion is based off a study done at the federal level and how congressional staff members perceive different advocacy tactics as influential to the legislator that they're working for. So before we look at those numbers, we have a quick trivia poll question. What percentage of congressional staff surveyed reported that form emails have a lot of position influence on legislators? Do you think it's 58, 30, 12, or 1%? And I'll give everyone a second to answer that. Okay, there we go. Okay, so looks like there's some different answers that rolled in, a few for 58, a few for 30, majority for 12, and then also 1%. So the answer is that whopping 1%. And I wanna preface all this by saying, we aren't trying to discourage you from participating in forum emails. In fact, these emails really do make a difference, especially in reinforcing support for positions that legislators have already taken or raising awareness on issues that may have otherwise been ignored. But the truth is because Congress is flooded with these form emails, they are just not as effective as other strategies. The take home is don't skip the click through emails if that's all you're able to do at the time. They definitely do serve a purpose and organizations like ours wouldn't be asking you to do them if it wasn't important. However, there are influential options to maximize your effectiveness and that's kind of what we're diving into today. This slide shows that difference between sending form emails or letters or sending personal ones. You can see just what a huge difference just personalizing your message can make. Taking just a few minutes to change the subject line and then putting the talking points into your own words can dramatically increase your influence on your representatives and the legislation that you care about. So here's a graph with more results from that survey. We're not gonna to touch upon all of these, but do pay special attention to in-person visits, individualized messages, phone calls, comments during town halls, and form messages. That dark orange you see represents a lot of influence, whereas that lighter orange is some influence. The number at the end of the bar is that combined influence. So a few things to note. Form emails are at the bottom, and in-person constituent meetings are at the top of the list of the most positive influence. Phone calls are much better than form emails, but look at how much influential, how much more influential individualized emails are. We can collect a lot of valuable information from this graph. And please note, even these bottom influential strategies are still of influence. Everything here is important. So to start, I briefly want to touch on op-eds and LTEs. So these are really an art, and some people love to take advantage of their written skills by submitting these, type of, these types of editorials. Excuse me. An op-ed is an opposite the editorial page, while an LTE is a letter to the editor. So op-eds are dedicated to commentary, features, and opinions, and are typically required to go through the formal approval process of that paper's editors. 
LTEs, on the other hand, are written in response to an article, an op-ed, or column that the paper has printed or in reaction to a notable event. So LTEs are also much shorter than op-eds, typically around 250 words or less, compared to the standard 700-ish words of op-eds. If you are interested in writing an op-ed or an LTE, we recommend you start by looking at the guidelines and process laid out by the paper that you want to publish. Once you begin writing, make sure you're doing your research and getting your facts straight. You'll want to make a clear, valid argument, and don't be afraid to mention your legislators by name. End with a call to action. Don't be discouraged if your letter isn't printed. Just keep trying, and you should eventually get one in. And I'm going to toss it over to Matt. Okay. I just want to start by saying hello to everyone, and I'm really glad that you're here today with us. Um, what we've learned so far is that the easiest strategy is not necessarily the most effective. The more involved and personal your engagement, the more effective it is. And it's important to note that passing legislation is really about personal relationships, building relationships with legislators. As you can see here, 87% of congressional staff surveyed reported that comments during telephone town halls were influential. Even though it's a very small point of contact, it, it's a direct contact with a legislator. Town halls, of course, are forums where legislators, sometimes candidates, invite constituents to discuss issues. But there are other opportunities you can meet legislators, such as at community events that they might be attending, that you can also attend because they're open to the public. Um, so we're going to talk about how to get you to these town halls and other events with the information to help you make a good impression for the animals. So first of all, and uh, you can go to the next slide, thank you. Um, you have to know your legislators, and if you don't already know who they are, it's very easy to find out. A quick search will show you who represents you at the local, state, and federal levels. For federal bills being discussed in Congress, you'll be focusing on your federal representative in the House of Representatives. They represent you in your federal district. And then your two federal senators who represent everyone in your state in Congress. And then for state legislatures, with the exception of Nebraska, which uh, where I'm from is a unicameral or only has one house, all the other state legislatures are bicameral bodies. So they're composed of a lower house, which they often, they all go by different names, assembly, general assembly, state assembly, house of delegates, um, house of representatives, and then an upper house, which is the Senate. So if you go to our website, aldf.org forward slash find my rep, you can plug in your address and you will find your uh, state and federal representatives. And then to find your local representatives in your city or county, you can go to usa.gov um, and that website, uh, usa.gov forward slash elected hyphen officials and you can find out um, your local representatives. So once you know who they are, you'll wanna find out more about them. Uh, and you'll want to do your homework. A lot of this information is on their website. You can find their voting record, bills they've sponsored, committee assignments. You can see their bio or read news stories they've posted. And this is all to find out more about their background. The goal in this is looking for common ground that you have with them. If your philosophy is aligned with theirs, great. But if not, keep looking for ways that you can connect with them. You can look up their alma mater, their occupation, awards they've received. If they haven't championed any animal causes, maybe they've worked on an environmental protection bill or other social justice issues that you align with. Really, you're just finding something you can relate with them on to have a starting point for building a relationship. And while you're on their site, you can track their legislative calendar. Um, check their contact or events tab, and usually you'll see if they have anything going on where the public's invited and you could meet them there. And there's gonna be more coming up later in the webinar and what to say and do when you have that opportunity to meet them. A couple of final points I wanna make before turning it back over to Abby. Um, you can go to the next slide. While on their site, sign up for their e-newsletter so that you can keep up with their work and find out about upcoming events and follow them on social media because it's a way to both stay informed about the issues they're talking about and engage with them on those issues. Abby? 
All right. So next up is testifying. And trust me, I know how intimidating testifying sounds, but the fact of the matter is that legislators really have this process down to a science. There's nothing confusing or intimidating about speaking in front of your elected officials. I mean, except, of course, that like public speaking component. But our goal here is to equip you with all the information you need to feel confident when it is your turn to speak. So we can really break this process down into three parts, finding a meeting, preparing your testimony, and then actually testifying. So for the sake of this example, we're gonna to prepare to testify at a city council meeting. So first things first, we need to find a meeting to speak at. You can visit your city council website to find the calendar of upcoming meetings. The odds are your council probably meets on a consistent basis, whether that's once a week, twice a month, so on. So check to see when the next meeting is. At some point before the meeting, the agenda will be posted. You can use the agenda to then determine if the council will be accepting general public comment or comments on the specific issue at the meeting. Side note, it's also valuable to testify virtually if you're unable to physically show up to the meeting. And there's typically a separate process that'll be posted on that agenda for calling in and then signing up to testify virtually. So once you have chosen your meeting, you can start preparing your testimony. You'll wanna have about two to three minutes of testimony prepared. But I will say I personally always have a one minute version in case that time does get cut short. When you're writing your testimony, you'll wanna focus on the importance of the le legislation to you and your community and not just about what the ordinance will do. On the day of the meeting, you'll wanna dress professionally and be patient when you're waiting for your turn to speak. When it is your turn, you're gonna introduce yourself for the record, thank the council for their time, and be respectful if you do happen to get cut off early, which is not entirely uncommon. Thank the council once more and your job's all done. To help you really picture what testifying looks like, we do have a video of our very own Matt testifying in front of the LA City Council in support of a rodeo ban from last year. Hi, I'm Matt Roselle, and I'm uh, talking under general comment. Okay, you have Welcome. one minute. Council President, Council Members, my name is Matt Roselle. I'm from CD10 and the Campaigns Manager of the Animal Legal Defense Fund. We are here in strong support of Council Member Blumenfield's rodeo ordinance. There are few laws to protect these animals who are often severely injured, suffering broken backs, legs, and agonizing deaths. California law requires rodeos to report injuries, but they often don't. We filed a suit against California Rodeo Salinas for failing to report, and of the 41 video documented injuries, only four were reported. That is exactly what happened last month in the Orange County Fair. A bucking bull shattered his leg after falling in front of hundreds of spectators, including small children. Despite a public outcry on social media, sharing videos of the gruesome incident, the death went unreported. Please, it's time to pass this ordinance and protect these animals. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next speaker. All right, so as you can see, it really is a pretty casual ordeal, but it provides the council with a good idea of how much support there is for a specific issue. Back to Matt. Okay. <laughs> Next, we're gonna talk about writing your legislator. And as you can see from these statistics, writing your legislator is still a very effective way to influence them. Um, both emails and postal letters are about equally impactful so which method you use is more of a preference, but related to postal mail, you might be interested to know that uh, security, measure, security measures in Congress changed up back in 2001. You might remember the anthrax scare where anthrax lace letters were sent to members of Congress. I checked on this and those same security measures are still in place today. So. If you do send a postal letter to Congress, what actually happens is it goes to a mailroom, it gets scanned and gets sent electronically to the office first anyway, and then the hard copy after it's been checked will follow. So how you send your message uh, is up to you, but let's talk a little bit about what messaging is most effective. So you can see that the survey drilled down asking how helpful it is for messages to include various uh, types of messaging. And they, they zeroed in on these three, which is factual information, the constituents reasons for supporting the bill, and a personal story related to the issue. 
As you can see, information about the impact of the bill and your personal reasons um, rank similarly high. But if you have a good personal story to relate, that could really be effective as well. So you should go ahead and share it. And then on this next slide, you're going to see sort of just a breakdown of the components of a typical message and the things that you will want to include. So you start off with a salutation. Um, you want to mention that you're a constituent. You could, if it's a city council, you could say your neighborhood or, or uh, at a state or federal level, talk about your district or just say, I'm a constituent, writing to ask for your support for the bill name and the bill number. And then the middle section is where you put your facts or your reasons. Um, you can talk about what the bill does. You can talk about how it will impact the community or the district. And then in the end, you wrap it up by, again, your ask, you want them to support and the name of the bill. It really can be as short and simple as this. This, in this length, is an effective um, letter to your legislator. If you have more to say, obviously you can add more detail. And so next up, as advertised, uh, we have an advocate hack for you in your writing to your legislator that could be a time saver for you. So you've already seen the statistics, putting a message in your own words is much more effective, but it's also time consuming. We all know we're all busy. It's difficult to have time to, to draft a new message. And if the time factor is preventing you from, from doing this, consider using an AI platform to do it for you. So we've all been hearing a lot about artificial intelligence. You can actually save time by using a platform like ChatGPT or many of the other ones that are free and out there for you to use, these AI software technologies. And you can put your talking points or a legislative summary or a letter that's been pre-drafted into one of these formats, cut and paste it, and it will give you um, a reformatted letter. So you can play around with these different formats. It's as simple as cutting and pasting the copy you wanted to redraft into the AI platform and then giving it some simple instructions. You can say, type in something like, please turn these talking points into a short letter to my legislator to support the bill. And then once it gives you an output, um, you can further tweak it. You can say, this is too long, make it less than 250 words. And when you get something that you like, always make sure to check and edit it um, to make sure there's no glaring mistakes. This technology is still imperfect, obviously, but it really can make quick work of personalizing a message. And um, I'm gonna pass it back over to Abby. Cool, okay, so in addition to writing your legislator, among the most influential tools is calling your legislator. So 86% of surveyed staffers reported that phone calls were of at least some influence on undecided legislators. And you'll see shortly in a video to follow that calling your legislator is really simple and it can really take less than like five minutes. So before you call, just prepare to have the phone answered by a staffer and not the legislator. This is really the most common scenario. And don't worry though, because the staffer is gonna take your message and spread the word to the legislator. So do be polite. When they answer, introduce yourself, state that you are a constituent of that legislator and that you would support or oppose the bill followed by the bill number. You can also ask before you hang up if the staffer knows where the legislator stands on that issue. They may not, they may, doesn't really matter that much. Okay, and then here's an example of a script you can use to make the call to your legislator with confidence. You could say something like, hi, my name is, I'm a constituent of the representative. I'm calling today in support of the bill name followed by the bill number. Do you know where the rep currently stands on this issue? Great, thank you so much, have a great day. Okay, so now I have a video of me again talking to you guys, but we're gonna talk about everything or given everything that we've talked about with the emailing and calling, this video is me sitting down doing both in one go so you can see how quick and easy it is. We really wanna hone in on these personalized messages because they're so much more effective than the form emails as we now know and they don't have to take much more than a few minutes of your time. This video is about six minutes, and that's with me personalizing a message to my legislator and then calling, while also talking you through the process. So it probably took about 
three and a half minutes to do both. We have seen legislators shift their position immediately after receiving a few dozen phone calls in a single day from constituents. And conversely, legislators have pointed out that they didn't take a position on an issue because they didn't hear from anyone that was important. So all that is to say, this is important. And now here's me again in a different form talking to you. Okay, hi again, everybody. So we're gonna quickly go over how to email and then call your legislator in one sitting so that you can see A, how simple it actually is, and then B, how little time it takes. So I'm interested in contacting my legislator in support of the Mink Virus Act. So I just navigated to that page on the Animal Legal Defense Fund website. Um, this page has a bit more about the act itself, including the sponsor, the introduction date, and then just a little bit more detail. And then I'm obviously interested in taking action, so I'm going to move forward and push this button, take action. And this is the page where you can learn a bit more about the act and then send an email to your legislator. So you're going to want to fill out all your personal details. It's important to fill out your address so that they can link you with the appropriate legislator that's in your jurisdiction. Um, and then you're going to click next. And my rep is John Curtis. And you have the opportunity to personalize the subject as well as the message of your email. And as we just learned, personalized messages are much more influential than the form messages. So we're just going to customize this a little bit. Right now it says, please support the Mink Virus Act to protect animals and public health. Um, just spice it up a little bit. And if you're having a hard time figuring out how to word something, I really like using AI platforms like chat GPT. I know it's kind of intimidating and a little weird feeling, honestly, at first, but it's a really great tool to just kind of rework the wording of something simple like this. So just be straightforward with the machine, I guess, and just say, can you help me reword, reword this email subject? There you have it. Make sure you reread this over also because although it's a smart tool, it does make mistakes. So don't think it's going to be perfect. Um, that's what I just wrote. Copy, come back over and paste. So we get rid of that subject. It's not super urgent. Advocate for the Mink Virus Act to safeguard animals and public health. And that'll do. And then for the message itself, we can also reword this. So go ahead and copy all of that. Bring it over to Mr. ChatGPT. Can you help me reword this? Oh my goodness. Reword this brief email. Perfect. Copy and let's paste it over. Quickly reread it. Have mm -hmm. That looks great. We're just going to go ahead and send. Okay, so our email has sent to Mr. John Curtis. And now, while we're here, let's just make a phone call too. It won't take very long at all. Um, so to find out my rep's phone number, I'm just going to use the ALDF tool. Who is my rep? You can just Google that really quickly. <clears throat> find your elected officials. And you're going to want to enter in your address and your postal code again. Find your official. And there he is, Rep. John Curtis, and here is his phone number. We're just going to give him a little ring. 202-225-7751. I put on speaker so you can hear it. Congressman Curtis is 
Hi, my name is Abby Benish. Um, I'm a constituent of Rep Curtis in Park City. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you doing today, Abby? I'm great. Thank you so much. Um, I was actually just calling to ask that Rep Curtis please consider supporting um, the Mink Virus Act. It's H.R. 3783. Okay. H.R. 3783? Yes. Okay. Great. And you wouldn't happen to know where he stands on that issue, would you? Um, I don't currently. Oh, that's but, okay. Uh, yeah, if you'd like, I can, uh, um, if you'd like to re receive a response on it, I can pass that along to him and he can, he can send you a message back on that. That would be awesome. Perfect. And, um, Abby, can I get your last name, um, real quick so I can, um, take down this note and pass it along to him? Yeah, of course. It's Benish, B-E-N-E-S-H. Just A B B Y or A B B E Y. Thank you for asking. E -Y. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, one second. And can I get your zip code, Abby? Yes, it's eight four zero six zero. Perfect. Eight four zero six zero. Um, and can I get an email address as well to send the response back? Yeah, you can use a Benish, so a b e n e s h at aldf.org. org. At aldf.org. Uh, perfect. Um, I'm just going to take note of that real quick. Awesome. Back. should be all good to go. Is there anything else I can do for you today? No, I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Yeah, definitely. Have a good rest of your day, Abby. You too. Take care. Bye. As well. Bye. It's that easy. It really is. It's that easy. <laughs> um, piece of cake. You guys could do that. It takes about like three or four minutes to both email and then call your legislator. So don't be afraid to do it. It's important. And then now that we have an understanding of how important calls and personalized messages actually are, we want to introduce you to our Calls for Compassion program. We're really excited to launch this volunteer opportunity and to offer it to all of you if you're interested. So essentially, Calls for Compassion allows volunteers like yourself to connect with voters in a target jurisdiction. You'll then educate them about an animal protection issue or bill and coach them and then patch them through to their legislator's office so they can speak in favor or opposition to that piece of legislation. So with a short online training and ongoing hands-on support from our campaign staff, that's us, you can easily learn to use our online tool, Hub Dialer, to make calls to constituents living in areas where our priority legislation may need some extra help. So all you need to do and all you need to have to participate is a computer or a smartphone. Calls are made during the business hours in that target area, but within that window, you can call at your convenience from anywhere in the US, volunteering as little or as much time as your schedule allows for. Um, if you're interested in learning more or participating in this program, please do contact Matt or I, and we're happy to chat with you, happy to help get you started or answer whatever questions you may have. Okay, thanks, Abby. Um, next up, we're gonna talk about sharing action alerts. And no doubt you've all participated in action alerts. You, you get them from us. We hope and thank you for participating in them. But we're also asking you to share our action alerts because you can actually increase the uh, effectiveness of doing an action alert by getting family and friends to participate as well. So you can um, email action alerts to your friends and family. You can also share alerts you get on social media, on your social channels, and then you multiply the effectiveness and spread the word about important animal protection campaigns. So how to do that? Well, sharing is easy. For emails, all you have to do is forward the email. You can add a list of all your best contacts in the blind CC field in a quick sentence, just saying, hey friends, check this out. It only takes a minute and you can help animals with me or whatever you wanna say. For social media, it's also easy. Um, as you probably are well aware, Facebook has a share arrow. Instagram has this little kite icon you can see here on this slide. Twitter or X has a retweet symbol that's sort of like a box with arrows circling it. So um, check it out, find ways to share all these action alerts and 
become more effective in your advocacy. And if you like online advocacy or spend time on social media, please join our ROAR program. So it's our social media ambassador program. It stands for Remote Online Advocacy Representatives. And um, when you sign up, you get a weekly email asking you to share a particular priority social media campaign. This is a way, as we just said, to amplify our key issues and protect animals with us. So ROAR members also receive some fabulous perks and prizes that you can only find out if you sign up. So sign up today. Um, it's really easy. The link is aldf.org forward slash ROAR. And we will have a sign up link in the resources page with a bunch of other resources connected to this webinar that you can find easily. So we are getting close to the end of our webinar and we want to thank you so much for your attention thus far. We're glad you're still with us. We're now um, gonna talk about scheduling a meeting. This is the very top of the engagement ladder, meeting with your legislator. Of all surveyed, meeting with your legislator is considered the most effective strategy by congressional staff. You already know how to find your legislator, so let's get into how to meet with them. So you can check their website for a request a meeting link, or you can just call or email their office and ask for a meeting. One thing to know, you may likely get invited to meet not directly with the representative, but with a staff member. Please don't be put off by that. This is very common at all levels of government and you should trust that if you're making a good impression with that staff person, making a convincing argument, that sentiment, the information will be passed on to the representative. And really building relationships with their staff goes a long way in passing legislation. These are really the people who work behind the scenes who have the most contact with legislators and arguably have quite a bit of influence over them. So after you secure your meeting, you will want to prepare for success. And one thing to think about is, are you meeting with them alone or are you going to bring a small group or coalition with you? It can be very successful to have a group especially if each person is representing a different interest or has a different role to play or a different story to tell. Um, you wanna prepare and practice, whether it's you alone or with a group on who's gonna present what, and really know what you're asking and have your materials ready. You're gonna to wanna to have a fact sheet that's like a one page sheet with all your facts on it. You may want um, you know, a frequently asked questions page, which kind of, makes the arguments or questions that might come up and then answers them. And really, if you need help preparing for a meeting like this, please reach out to us. This is what we're here for, ask us. We actually may already have a fact sheet for the issue that you're working on, or we could help you get some facts together. So um, please, we want to be a resource for you as well. And then you might wanna also consider showing a short one to three minute video about the issue. This can be really impactful and kind of put an image in, in the mind of the representative or the staffer about really why it's so important to pass the legislation. And so now it's time to actually meet with your legislator. Of course, you're going to wanna to dress professionally, be prepared with a clear, concise summary of the problem and the solution, and make sure that you have your most important talking points at top of mind because there are times when your meeting might get cut short or you really, especially at like a town hall or your meeting um, at an event, you really are only gonna get a minute. So really think carefully about what your most important points are. And also make sure that you listen to what they're saying and have a back and forth conversation. Remember, you're building a relationship here. You wanna understand what questions the legislator and their staff might have about the issue. And if you get a question that you just don't know the answer to, never guess. It's just fine to say, I don't know the answer, but I'm going to find out for you. And then now you have an opportunity to circle back with them and another point of contact to keep the conversation going. 
It's also just really important to remind you to stay positive and professional, even if you get challenged or dismissed or feel dismissed by the legislator or staff person. These things do happen. Just stick to your facts, stay professional. Um, and at the end, you know, in thinking about your meeting, you want to make sure you end on time. Be, be really respectful of their time because they're all very busy, even the staff members, thank them. And if tasks were assigned, if there was any part of the discussion where anyone volunteered to do something or research something, kind of this, the wrap up of the meeting is a good way to go over expected timeframes and like who's gonna do what and, and when you are expected to deliver on those things. And then after the meeting, there's some things you're gonna wanna think about as well. You wanna debrief with your team, kind of think about how it went and please reach out to us and tell us how it went. Our legislative campaigns really rely on information from these personal contacts that you might have with your legislator. And we really just wanna know what you're up to and how it's going and, and be a part of, uh, of what you're working on. So please do reach out to us and let us know. You always wanna send a thank you email encourage everyone who joined the meeting to send a thank you. And you can even, if you have a group of grassroots supporters who are working with you on this, you can have them also email. And if a, if a little flurry of emails come in right after your meeting where people are saying, hey, I'm aware you had a meeting today on this issue, it's really important to me. Those uh, can really amplify your meeting and underline the importance of the issue. So uh, consider that as well. And so now we, we truly are at the end of our webinar. We're gonna wrap up with one last poll question. Uh, you've already been, <laughs> you've already answered it, but let's try it again now that the webinar is uh, over. Um, after participating in this webinar, how likely are you to level up your advocacy? Not likely, somewhat likely. I got a few good tips. Um, likely, I feel better prepared with tools for success or 100%. I'm on fire and ready to volunteer. So go ahead and take a few seconds here to choose your answer. And the results are in. Oh, that's really encouraging, actually. Awesome. Really excited to hear most of you are prepared, feel like you're going to um, be more successful or on fire. So that's really great to hear. And um, we wanna thank you so much for your time and attention on this webinar. As always, uh, we don't consider this like the end of the conversation. We would love to, for you to stay in touch. That's why uh, Abby and I both have our email addresses here. Please jot them down, reach out to us. We wanna know what you're working on. There are volunteer opportunities. We've already mentioned the ROAR program and our Compassionate Calling program. We'd love to have you join, but uh, we'd also just like to support you in the activism you're already doing. So uh, let's, uh, let's stay in touch and we have some time for a few questions. Excellent, thank you so much, Matt and Abby. And with that, we will officially open Q&A. A few people have already submitted some questions, but anyone else, if you have them, you can go ahead and submit them now. So we have a few people talking about how this is great information. They're very appreciative of all this, but they feel just a little overwhelmed as far as how to just apply this to day-to-day -day, um, advocacy if they don't have a specific issue that they are working on right now. Can you give a little direction there? Yeah, I mean, as you know, I kind of just said, the, um, the way to really like fine tune your advocacy locally or at your state level would be really to reach out and have a conversation with us. And we can really talk about, you know, where your heart's at, what issues you care about the most and help plug you in to either an existing legislative campaign or maybe a volunteer opportunity that you could help us with. Um, there's really so many um, things that you can do. There's also a resource that we're putting with this webinar that is just a list of um, kind of a brainstorming list of local activism and, and local actions that you can take. Look over that list, see if anything jumps out at you from that list of something that you think is needed in your community. But 
um, we'd really love to stay in touch and talk to you in more detail. Great. Um, there's a couple questions about the survey. Uh, you mentioned that the survey was of congressional staffers, but the results translated to smaller scale uh, state and local governments. Can you speak a little bit more about that? Yeah. Um, so there was not that we could find, there wasn't specific data um, similar on a state level or local level. However, um, just from all the years of experience from our legislative team here and all of the work that we have done at the local, state, and federal level, I really feel strongly that um, anecdotally and from the information that we have that this, the, this data really does apply at all levels of government. I really think there is a consistency there that um, these types, th this effectiveness kind of translates to um, the, you know, the way that you would want to, to operate at the local and state level, you know, really the personal attend, uh, the, the personal contact with legislators really does make the biggest difference at all levels of government. Excellent. Next one. Um, couple people talking about how much they love social media. This is, of course, something we're all involved with nowadays, but any suggestions for really maximizing your efforts on social media? Yeah, um, well, I really feel like um, sharing action alerts from our group and others can really amplify the messages and you can, you know, um, it can really go far in making sure that more people see it. Um, one of the little tricks that I recently found out, it's, it always was very hard to share posts on Instagram. And for a while, you actually had to have a separate app. Um, but now there, I, I just recently discovered that if you share something to your stories, and then you go into your stories and you look on the, the little, the three dots that uh, give you more options, you can actually then from your story share something to your permanent, uh, your feed on Instagram, which is something that I was kind of excited about because stories, as you know, only last for 24 hours and, and um, what you put on your wall, you have a lot more control over how long it stays up. But, um, but yeah, joining our Roar program would be another way to get involved and we'd really love for you to, to do that as well. Great. So some people seem to be very excited about the use of AI and chat GPT, and some people are like eh, a little intimidated by it. So for those who are a little intimidated by it, would you still suggest for those four emails that they go in and edit some of the information and still make it their own? Yes. You know, clearly the the AI is just one option. You You really can just edit it change the wording around, shorten it. Um, really, if you if you're only have time to do one thing, I would say change the subject line. Because if the staffer is looking through and seeing all the subject lines coming through kind of at the same time and every one of them is identical, they kind of already know, hey, this is a form email and it gets put into that box, you know? So just changing the subject line alone could make a huge impact. But yeah, I mean, it's just the process of editing, just switch it up a little bit. It really doesn't take that much time to edit an email and, and uh, rearrange it and put it in your own words. Great. Now you had a lot of great tips for uh, meeting with your legislators. Uh, how about tips when you know your legislation is opposed to uh, the bill that you are wanting to get supported? Yeah, I mean, it can be tough when your representative has a strong position against the bill. Um, they still deserve to hear the facts. And I think it's still valuable because you're their constituent. They have a responsibility to listen to you. Um, I would never give up on a legislator. Uh, in fact, what we've found in, in times when a bill is stuck in a committee, say, and the chair is opposing and we're just having a hard time getting a hearing. Sometimes it's just a flurry of phone calls, even you know, 15 or 30 calls in a day 
that go into that legislator that can really push them to give that bill a hearing. Um, maybe they're maybe they're they're not um, going to vote for it, but maybe they'll give it a hearing because their constituents are really pushing for it. So so never give up, even if you have an indication that your legislator is is not supportive. Great. Can you remind everyone who they would contact or reach out to if they want to be more involved in the calls for compassion? Oh, yeah. Um, us. <laughs> you reach out to us. You can use these emails here. We'll be happy to chat with you. Well, I think we are. Had some great questions coming in. How about... Where do you suggest people get information at the state level for committee meetings and when bills are in session? Um, well, so if you go to your, you know, just your state government website, um, you can look at their calendars. You can, I mean, I would just get familiar with uh, the websites, both the the House and the Senate, or you know, whatever the name the uh, whatever the name of your um, various houses are. Um, you can find calendars on their website. Um, if it's a specific piece of legislation, you can also look up that legislation and kind of see where it's at. Usually there's a timeline for that for that piece of legislation. You can see what committee it's in. Um, and then you can look up the this you and, and often you can actually sign up for alerts when mm -hmm. something is happening with a piece of legislation. I don't know, Abby, am I missing anything? No, I was actually going to say that last piece that you mentioned. Um, I know at least in the Utah State Legislature, you can make an account and then track a specific bill and you can keep track of where it is in committee as it's being pushed to like second reading, pass favorably or what have you. Um, so that's a really useful tool. Great. Um, well, I think that's about it. Thank you guys so much for um, submitting all the wonderful questions out there and for participating and for joining us and watching this webinar. Thank you, Matt and Abby, uh, for all that you do and all the amazing info that you're sharing with us. You will be able to view a recording of this webinar along with our other past webinars on our website. And if we didn't get to your question, please feel free to send us an email at events at ALDF.org and we will make sure to get back to you. Or of course, you can reach out to your presenters directly. Their emails are still up there. Additional resources for the webinar will be made available on our website at ALDF.org slash webinars. Please take the survey that will pop up on your screen to help us in future planning. You might need to click a blue continue button to access it. And thank you. And we appreciate your ongoing support for the animals. We truly couldn't do this work without all of you guys helping and participating. So thank you. We appreciate you. Yeah. yeah thank, thank you, you everyone. So much. Thanks for being here.